Hello everyone. Thanks for watching this video. This video is about the hot standby high availability solution in RTBrick stack for BNG subscribers. We are talking about IPOE subscribers in this demo. Let's understand the problem a BNG subscriber can face in a typical deployment. Customary BNG topology would look like something in this diagram where we have subscriber connected to the OLT and then to the BNG box. BNG is then connected to the core providing AAA service and internet connectivity to the subscriber. On a normal day, everything works well and everyone is happy. But say if a link failure happens between OLT and BNG as shown here, subscriber has to face severe service disruption until someone fixes the cable. In today's world, where subscriber have come to expect 100% availability for almost all services, subscriber customer experience is severely impacted here. Same is the case if a BNG crashes or fails. Basically every link or node without a backup can fail. This is where RTBrick's HA solution is designed to remove almost all the single point of failures in the BNG network. Unlike other L2 L3 services, subscribers require significant states to be programmed for its working and backing up all such states in hot standby mode is quite challenging and a solution with sub-second failover time is quite difficult in this scenario. We in Artibric have achieved this elegantly with our HA solution which we will be seeing this in this video. Another highlight of our solution is that we have designed it to prevent any micro loops from forming in the topology during the transient state after the network event. Let's now see how Artibric has implemented the HA solution for IPOE subscribers. We will set up 10k IPOE subscribers with edge cost and replay services and we will try to see how the subscribers are protected during the failover. This is the physical topology used for this demo. We have 5 UFI space Q2C devices running different flavors of RBFS for this demo. Two devices RTB08 and RTB09 act as the DUT or the BNG device which runs RBFS consolidated BNG image. The other two devices RTB05 and RTB10 runs the spine image and act as the core router. RTB04 act as the edge router here. We also have a service node which runs free radius Grafana and BNG blaster. Free radius is used for the AAA services, Grafana to plot various matrices. BNG blaster is the test tool used in this demo. BNG blaster is an open source test tool created by RTBrick to multidimensionally test subscriber management and routing scenarios at scale. More information about BNG Blaster can be found at uh, the RTBrick GitHub page. Now coming to the logical topology where we see various connections and protocol used for the demo. We are trying to set up 10,000 IPOE subscribers over two OLTs here. 5,000 subscribers will be served by the first DUT RTB08 and the 5,000 by the second DUT RTB09. Each OLT is connected to both the DUTs via lag interfaces. We have two lags between the OLT and BNG devices. Lag member to the active BNG only will be active. DUTs are also connected to each other via lag. And uh, uh, even towards the core, it's connected via lag interfaces. In the core routers, we have ISIS and LDP running. And the DUTs also have uh, BGP connectivity towards the route reflector, which is advertising 1 million IPv4 prefixes and 120k IPv6 prefixes. Depending on the HA or redundancy configuration, one of the DUT device will act as the active and one for the standby for one lag. For the other lag, it will be vice versa. Now the active uh, BNG will onboard all the subscribers coming from that corresponding OLT. Here OLT, for OLT1, RTB8 will be the active node and for OLT2, RTB9 will be the active node. Let's now start the demo. So during the demo, we will be configuring two DUTs, RTB08 and RTB09. The other three devices are fully configured before. We will also be starting the test tool, BNG Blaster, during the demo. So let's see the devices first. So this is the first DUT, uh, which is RTB08. We will go to the RBFS CLI mode and then make sure that the config is empty. So there is no config here in this device. Similarly, in the other uh, device, RTB09, we will uh, do the same thing. Config should be empty here. Yeah, it's empty. 
So we also have a service node where we run the uh, free radius Grafana and BNG Blaster. So the file which we use for BNG Blaster is this one. So which has all the configuration for different protocol and uh, subscribers. So now uh, we also have a Grafana dashboard which will be showing during the demo. So the dashboard is there for uh, both the duties. So this is for UV8 or RTB08. Uh, now that we have not configured the device, the Grafana dashboard is completely empty. So these are the different stats uh, we, we can uh, see in the Grafana. So the same thing is there for the other uh, duty as well, UV09 or RTB09. So now let's uh, start configuring the device. So we will go to the first uh, device, we will go to the config mode, we will load the configuration, we will commit it, uh, I am going to do the same thing in the other DUT. So loaded almost a similar configuration here as well and uh, we have committed. So uh, uh, there is a lot of configuration here uh, which uh, includes access configuration, cost configuration and other protocol configuration. We have videos in our website to explain all these things. So here we will just see the uh, Grafana time series configuration and the redundancy part of it. So we will first uh, inspect the Grafana or the time series configuration which uh, basically uh, exports different metric from RBFS to Gra Grafana using Prometheus. So these are the different uh, metrics we have configured. Uh, so we have the BGP next stop, routes, uh, lot of such uh, things. We can in fact uh, uh, export almost all the internal states of RBFS into Grafana and uh, view it uh, graphically uh, so that it will be very easy for the user to understand what's going on. So this is uh, such an example of uh, time series configuration. So we will inspect whether this configuration is uh, reflected in uh, Grafana. Yeah, so the Grafana is starting to plot things here. So we have the CPU stats, uh, memory stats and lot of other uh, interface related stats. Subscriber stats are empty because we have not started the subscribers. Uh, so otherwise we can see all those things, the routing stats. Uh, now we have only 31 IPv4 and 21 IPv6 address. Uh, so once we start the uh, blaster, uh, this will be uh, in millions. So we also have the redundancy state here. Yeah, so that is about the Grafana. Uh, now we will start the blaster in the service node. So this is the service node where uh, uh, we were expecting to start uh, BNG blaster. So this is the command to start just with the JSON file which we saw before. I will start the blaster. Yeah, the blaster is starting up. So it's uh, trying to onboard the subscribers and it's uh, also starting the other protocol simulations. We will see that in the device. So the lag should be up now first. The lag is all resolved. So uh, we can just uh, see the uh, topology here. So all the lag towards the access and towards the network is all resolved now. We will just check the protocol state before coming to the subscriber part. So ISIS neighborship is up. Uh, LDP neighbor also should be up. So we can see the BGP pair. So we can see that uh, the blaster is simulating uh, the route reflector and it has pumped uh, uh, this much of route towards this DUT. So si similar should be the output in the other DUT as well. So now this was the protocol part. Uh, so uh, coming to the most important part, the redundancy part. So we, as we saw it in the topology diagram, we have two lags and both are uh, belonging to different redundancy group or redundancy session we call. And uh, for uh, lag 1, uh, RTB08 should be active and for lag 11, RTB9 should be active. We have configured it in such a way. So we will see whether that is happening now. So show redundancy session should uh, show that. So here if we see uh, uh, the redundancy session 100, it's, it is associated with lag 1 and the state is active. Similarly for redundancy session 200, the state is standby. Uh, we will inspect the same command in the other DUT, RTB09, show redundancy session. Yeah, here it's the other way. So we have 100 as standby and 200 as active, which means that uh, the subscriber coming on lag 1 will be active on the uh, UF, UFI 8 or RTB8 and subscriber coming on lag 11 will be active on this device. 
so we will see whether that is happening we have come to dut1 uh, we will inspect the subscriber uh, with the interface filter so we can see the subscriber coming up on lag 1 here so the subscriber state is established we will see one subscriber in uh, detail so here all the subscriber details are listed and the state of the subscriber is established same command if we see in the other dut or rtp9 so all the information is synced to this node as well though uh, the state of the subscriber is in standby so the subscriber is backed up successfully in the uh, standby node and it's uh, ready to take over the active node whenever there is a failure so this is how rbfs actually back up the subscriber and uh, put it in hot standby mode so we will now i think all the subscribers should be converged we will see those details from uh, grafana so yeah so grafana if we see in ufi 8 uh, we have 5000 uh, established subscriber which will be the subscriber on lag 1 and we have 5000 standby subscriber which will be subscriber on lag 11 and uh, it got synced from the dut2 so we have total 10000 subscribers and similarly if you see the redundancy state it's uh, for 100 it's active for 200 it's standby the same uh, stats will be there for ufi 9 as well now let's uh, go back to the topology diagram uh, so uh, whatever we have we have intended uh, to onboard a 5000 subscriber in dut1 and dut2 it's done and uh, they are also ready to take over whenever the uh, the other node goes down so we will now see the traffic flow for each subscriber so here uh, with the red we have marked the uh, upstream traffic the upstream traffic uh, comes from the olt and then to the active node and then to upstream the downstream traffic can actually land on both standby and the active node so if it is landing on the standby node it will be redirected to active node and then to the subscriber now what we will do is we will try to shut one of the link down of the lag one so basically the uh, uh, the link connecting the bng and the olt we are shutting it down and we will see whether the subscriber which was active on lag one or rtb8 is getting taken over by rtb9 or not so after the event the traffic flow should be like this so the upstream and downstream uh, traffic both should take this path so we will see whether that is happening let's see the redundancy session one more time and also the lag status so both are as we saw before now we will make one of the lag interface down from the bng blaster so this is a cli to make a, a disable an interface uh, yeah so we are disabling the interface sn17c1 which is part of lag one yeah, we have disabled the interface it's as good as a link down event in the real uh, network topology so we will go to the dut1 again uh, we will see the lag status so lag one has become unresolved and uh, redundancy state session also we will see so redundancy session of uh, lag one which is 100 is down now and the peer has taken over the session and the peer state is standalone uh, we will uh, see the subscriber state the subscriber which was established before here uh, this was the subscriber has gone to standby now and the same subscriber uh, should be established in the other node because this subscriber is taken over by uh, DUT2 now Yeah, it's established now. So this subscriber was uh, standby before here and now it is after the switch over even it's established Redundancy session in this uh, node is the opposite of what we saw before it's standalone here and the peer state is down the subscriber account we will see from Grafana so in ufi 8 where we have uh, done a link down there are no active subscriber or established subscriber everything is in uh, standby and the redundancy session if we see for 100 it's down and for 200 it's still standby similarly for ufi 9 we can see the transition so ufi 9 has taken over all the 10,000 subscribers and the rd state is standalone and for 200 it's uh, active with that uh, we have come to the end of the demo so we have seen that in case of a network outage the rbfs can uh, successfully switch over the subscribers at scale to a different node providing a seamless experience to the user so in same way uh, rbfs can handle 
a no down event as well smoothly now coming to the summary we have seen that uh, artibrick support high availability at scale with subsequent switch over time and uh, in our solution we have removed every single point of failures with minimal oilt capability no micro loops are uh, seen during the switch over even in the transient time and uh, one more thing is uh, both active and standby node can attract the downstream traffic and uh, redirect it to the correct subscriber thanks a lot for watching if you have any questions or if you uh, if you want to know more please uh, contact us